So in this tutorial we're going to look at perpendicular gradients and how we work with them. So the thing you need to remember is that if we have two gradients, and I've called them M1 and M2 because we tend to call the gradient of a straight line M, if two gradients are perpendicular then they multiply together to give minus 1. Okay, if you want to you can remember this as 1 is the negative reciprocal of the other. In other words, M2 is minus 1 over M1. But actually, it's just as easy to remember that they multiply together to give minus 1. And you're going to need to remember that to find the gradient, if we're given a couple of points, it's rise over run, or the difference in the y's over the difference in the x's, and also that the equation of a straight line generally is y equals mx plus c. If you need to do some revision on straight lines and coordinates before you do this, do go and find the relevant tutorials. Right, let's have a quick look at some questions. So, uh, we're given a line, L, which has equation y equals 3x plus 4, and we note from that if we look at y equals mx plus c, then the gradient is 3 and the y-intercept is 4. And we're asked to find an equation of a line which is perpendicular to that line, L, and passes through 2 minus 1. And you will remember from the straight lines tutorial, the finding equations tutorial, that uh, in order to find the equation of a straight line, you need a gradient and any point on that line. So, let's do that. Oh, we are asked to leave our answer in a particular form, and that probably means we're going to have a fractional gradient, a gradient which is a fraction. So what do we do? Well, we're given a point, so we just need to find the gradient. And we can do that from the gradient of line L. The gradient of line L, we can just read off, off as we already have, is 3. It's the m bit of the equation. And so, uh, for the new line, uh, the gradient will be, uh, well I'm going to call it m, and it's going to be, well we could use uh, key point 2 here and use the whole ne negative reciprocal thing, or we could just spot that uh, it's minus a third. And why is it minus a third? Well, because minus a third times 3 is minus 1. And if you want to put some working down, that would be plenty. So the equation of the new line is something like y equals minus a third x plus c. In fact, it's exactly like that. But we do need to find the plus c. Now, in order to do that, we're going to use the point we're given. So we use 2 minus 1 which is, of course, an x value and a y value. So we put minus 1 in for y, and then we put 2 in for x, and that allows us, very quickly, to find c. Minus a third times 2 is minus 2 thirds, so we add 2 thirds to both sides to get the c on its own, and minus 1 plus 2 thirds is minus a third, and we're left with c on the right-hand side, and so we've found C. And that means that we can now complete the equation of the new line in y equals mx plus c form at least, that is minus a third x minus a third. But we're not asked to leave it like that, we need to put it in this form here, ax plus by plus c, where a, b and c are integers or whole numbers. So we just need to get rid of the fractions and we're going to do that by multiplying everything by 3, which gives us 3y is equal to minus x minus 1. And then to put it all on the same side, let's add the x to both sides and add the 1 to both sides. So let's put it over here as well. And that gives me my final answer of x plus 3y plus 1 equals 0. And there you go. That's the first question. Now we are going to do one more question. Here it is. This time we're given three points, A, B and C. And we're asked to find an equation of the line which passes through A 
and is perpendicular to BC. Well, you may be able to picture that in your head. If so, you're a better man than I. But I think we should probably sketch this. So all we need is a very rough sketch. So here are a pair of axes, a set of axes for us. And if we just very roughly plot A, which would look to be about there, that's 1, 4. B, which is minus 3, 1, so it's going to be about there. And C, which is 3 minus 2, and so that would be roughly there. We're told that the line passes through A and is perpendicular to BC. So there's BC, and here is a line which is perpendicular to BC and passes through A. So it's this line is the one we want. Right, well, again, we need to find a gradient and a point on the line. Well, we have a point on the line, so that's fine. So we just need to find the gradient. And to do that, we're first of all going to find the gradient of BC using our gradient formula here, rise over run, or if you like, the difference in the y's over the difference in the x's. I'm just going to label up my points um, B and C as x1, y1, and x2, y2, so I can put the numbers straight in the formula, and I can say the gradient of BC is well, here we go, y2 minus y1, so that's minus 2 minus 1. Make sure you're subtracting the same way. I'm doing c minus b here. And then 3 minus minus 3. And that is uh, minus 3 on the top. And 3, take away negative 3, is 3 plus 3, which is 6. And so the gradient of bc is minus a half. And so the m we want, the gradient we want, is of course 2. Now how have I done that so quickly? Well I've just remembered that the two things must multiply together to give minus 1 if they are perpendicular. So again, the only working I need to do there is to say since 2 times minus a half equals minus 1. And so the equation of the line is, and again in y equals mx plus c form, it is y equals 2x plus c. And how do we find the c? Well, we use the point a. That's the point we're given. So as we did before, we're going to use a point on the line, which is 1, 4. And that's going to give me 4, because that's the y value, is equal to 2 times 1, because that's the x value, plus c. And then I'm going to subtract the 2 times 1, which is just 2 from both sides. And that gives me 2 equals c, or if you like, c equals 2. And so the equation of the line, finally, is y equals 2x plus 2. And that's quite neat in that form, so we don't need to change it any further. So there you go. Perpendicular lines have gradients that multiply together to give minus 1.